Hello, and welcome to Standardizing Errors in Go, a practical guide with Dapper. My name is Cassie Coyle, and today we're going to go over a brief introduction to Dapper. We'll talk about why it's important to standardize your errors. We'll touch on the richer error model, which was the inspiration for our errors package. And then, of course, we'll go into the errors package itself. Again, my name is Cassie Coyle. I am a software engineer at Diagrid. And on the right are my teammates and the Dapper open source team at Diagrid. Let's get into it. Dapper stands for Distributed Application Runtime. It's a portable event-driven runtime for building distributed apps across the cloud and edge. It's a set of APIs for building secure and reliable microservices in a cloud-native environment. Dapper is the 10th largest CNCF project with a ton of companies using it. Our community says that Dapper is the backbone of their services. It does not have a lot of expense, and there's a ton of payback. Mic drop, right? However, 53% of our users say that debugging and troubleshooting is hard with Dapper. So Dapper offers 10 APIs with eight SDK supported and over 120 different component types. This leads to a really awesome open source project However, that's a large service area to cover and only a set number of hours and maintainers, of course. So when there are issues, sometimes it is hard to debug, which brings us to the importance of standardizing your errors. It's important to give back to your user a consistent and reliable error to enable them a smoother debugging process, one that gives them that context and clarity about the error like what app ID, what resource type, maybe the environment, et cetera. In the same way that our users can expect that standardized error, our developers are actually enabled to collaborate, right? Because it's writing that standardized format for the error. So all of this leans towards being empathetic to our users, which are application developers, and our community, which we can all agree here at GopherCon, that community is so important. The Richer Air model is the inspiration for our airs package. Here's a snippet of it developed and used by Google. We'll see a message status, the error code, error message, and relevant air details. Now let's take a look at all of the possible air detail types there are. Here's that long list. <laughs> starting with error info, which we require in Dapper, followed by retry info all the way down to help link. So there's quite a few that you can use to enrich your error to be more empathetic to your users. So let's take a look at that error info type that we require in Dapper. Each error detail type has its own attributes associated with it. So error info has domain, reason, and metadata, and each Air details should be filled in appropriately based on where it's at and our code base, of course. Let's take a look at our enriched errors, starting with a PubSub API overview. So on the left, we have a Dapper-enabled cart application publishing data to our message broker. Let's say we're using Redis there in the middle, which is a Dapper PubSub component. And then on the right, we have a shipping Dapper-enabled app where Dapper is routing that data back to the app. Already, you can tell we're in a distributed environment. It might be a simplified example, but you can see there's several areas where errors could occur. And yes, this comes with that territory of distributed systems, but we want to enable our users in those scenarios. Let's look at that enriched error for our PubSub API. If I were to run a grp curl using a fake Kafka, and a fake topic name and hitting our Dapper publish event endpoint, I used to get this exact error. Of course, it's pretty simplified. I'm forcing it. Like fake Kafka is obviously not found, yes. But we just saw all those error details that we can use to enrich this error output for our users. So now in Dapper today, we give our users these error details. Two of them for this specific API error info, and resource info. We're giving our users more actionable information to enable them. Mind you, this can be further expanded, of course, to give them a URL link. So they are one click away from helping themselves. How awesome is that? 
Okay, let's look at the consumption of our AIRS package in the Dapper Kit repository. It's a utility repo, all open source and all in Go. So please take it out or take a look at it. <laughs> Alrighty, the AIRS package is written using the builder pattern, making our AIR immutable by the caller. And we'll start with builder there, taking in both the gRPC and HTTP error codes, message, and tag. We enrich our AIR with that AIR info type. You could use any AIR type, but that's just this example. And then we simply build the AIR. That's our AIRS package. Now let's look at the implementation details for that code. Starting with our structs, of course, we have our AIR struct containing the details both error codes, message, and tag, and then that structs in our error builder struct. First, we call new builder, right? Taking in the appropriate variables, building our structs, returning our error builder. We add that error info, error detail type, and then return our error builder here. And then we simply build our error, making sure we have that required type for us in Dapper. It's important for us to return that builder.air here such that we did not have to manage an extra type in our very large code base. So all we had to do was implement the air interface and it all worked. So how to build the future with us. Hopefully today you learned a little bit more about Dapper and our airs package, which is all open source and ready to use. And you see how it benefits us in our community and how it might benefit you and yours. Thank you so much.